My Dear Fiona by Francis Rosenfeld Chapter 8, Souterrains The four-day festival was approaching the end, and after my friend's departure I figured I'd better head back to Kirkwall and see if I can find more puzzle pieces for my study, but I just couldn't face the stones again. Not yet. I headed north instead, not really sure about the destination, and followed the road until it reached the shore. Living on an island offers one the unique experience of being bound by a circular water line, no matter what direction you travel in, you are soon stopped by the edge of the sea. This makes some people feel closed in, in ways that start wearing on them as time passes, but for the true lovers of island living there is no greater comfort than the sight of the sea, and its effortless proximity always puts them at ease. The sea gives life, and it takes it brings riches and bounty, reveals and conceals what it chooses and keeps jealous guard over her secrets. For four thousand years the village of Scarabray was just another green bluff battered by the whims of the sea, until 1850, when a deadly storm stripped the grass and the topsoil off the ruins of a stone settling, perfectly preserved by the sand for millennia, a time capsule of Neolithic living. It is right on the edge of the beach, carefully protected with walls of flagstones braced by mounds of middens, a strange organic maze of houses and corridors, all connected to each other but in a way that permits closing off the living spaces for privacy. The complex is now open to the sky, and one only gets the genuine experience of what the place must have been like back in its day from the house replica built inside the museum, a series of dark twisted corridors, so low one had to crawl on hands and knees to travel through them, opening up in tall, wide rooms covered by wood and animal skin roof structures, lit only by the embers of their perpetual hearth fires. A cozy cluster of artificial caves, dug deep enough underground to stay comfortably warm and dry during the Orkney winters. You can almost hear the giggles of children, running around through their familiar underground stone burrows, not daunted by the scant light and completely safe from harm. There were no weapons found at Scarabray, just tools and artifacts of their lives. This Stone Age village housed a thriving culture before humans built the Egyptian pyramids. I have felt it before, in other ancient sites, the pulse of human life, devoid of all the technology advancements we boast today, but otherwise not essentially different from our own. They are not dead stones, they embody the joys and hopes and love and pain and in togetherness we all feel the same, and the eagerness to understand this thing we call life, so short and hard and strange, and whose meaning seems impossible to grasp. I'm starting to think my project a fool's errand, Fiona, how am I going to find traces of you so far back in time? The people at Scarabray have lived and died in its protective earth womb for 600 years until greener pastures caught the eyes of the younger generation, who slowly abandoned the old stones to the sand and the sea. Their artifacts still bear the marks and carving their hands placed on them, while their bodies have been worn to nothing by the creatures and the elements, and their bones were slowly moved through the landscape, from ossuary to ossuary, by doting descendants which handled them like precious relics and items of personal pride, their legacy. This abandoned village must have been in better shape in your time, and if you ever visited it, your spirit left no traces here. Maybe the sea gulped it whole, and returned it buried in sand, and by the time you passed through this life, its stone chambers were already steeped in their underground slumber. An older image of the Orkney Islands unfolded before my eyes, one of a thriving ancient culture, tens of thousands strong, an amazing happening place back then, I'm sure, and the place to be. Sophisticated architecture, successful agriculture and husbandry, arts and crafts, sailing, a prosperous and worldly society living in peace. You have to see aerial pictures of Scarabray in winter, which show a lost structure, open to the sky and threatened by the wind and the sea, a frozen desert encased in ice to appreciate the warm glow of the embers in the home's hearts of the past. In the safety of the compound, deep underground, people live their lives out of the cold, out of the hardship, in a cozy communal hibernation, lacking for none of the creature comforts. The sea has claimed 200 lives to return Scarabray, or whatever its name used to be when the ancients lived inside its walls 4,000 years ago, to the Orcadians. The sea gives life, and it takes it, and even now threatens to claim the Stone Age village for its own again with one of its mighty storms. Right now Scarabray is a verdant hill, with gently arching curves swerving around the ancient stone walls and the winding narrow corridors, 
surrounding the hollows of the rooms whose floors are relentlessly dusted in the fine sand carried by the breeze, a hill so green in the misty air it feels unreal, looking more like a sculpture carved into the earth than a place of human habitation. One can forget time here, but I had to get going, so I wouldn't have to drive at night, now that I unnecessarily added hours to my trip back to Kirkwall, trying to avoid the pull of the stones. I drove around the lock of Hooray through a bright green landscape, a land before time interrupted here and there by the large masses of the locks, to Finstown, where the sea greeted me again and followed around its edge back to my home base. It was almost dark when I turned the corner on Victoria Street in Kirkwall and saw the bed and breakfast, with strange relief, as if I'd been away and now had finally returned home, grateful to put a fire in the fireplace and feel its heat slowly warm my bones, thinking of nothing, doing nothing, just being. The spirit of Scar Bray stayed with me, it seems, reminding me of the simple pleasure of living, that life is really not that complicated if we don't get it tangled in our misguided attempts to give it convoluted meanings. When I woke up the next day, I noticed a parcel on the desk by the window, the landlady must have brought it inside in my absence. In a very kind gesture, the Heritage Society had assembled the material I asked for before my trip to Stromness and sent it to my room instead of holding it there for me to sort through. I spent the rest of the day going through photos of Pictish inscriptions and historical data, in privacy and comfort, happy to be out of the elements and by a warm fire, and browsed through the hundreds of photos on my phone, and I noticed there was no proof of my short-lived friendship with the hippie lady, and no reassurance the latter was a real person. I talked to my sister for half an hour. She wanted all the details about the festival, got really excited about the music and the atmosphere and made me promise I'd meet her there for the next event, in June. I feel my soul being pulled apart between the joy and lightness of living the days of music and poetry at the festival and the somber reverence of the realm of the dead and their bones, and their stones, and it's making me lightheaded. It's as if the dead have never left this place, and are quietly strolling among the living, unseen, through the perpetually wet stone streets of Kirkwall. The festival is still unfolding here, and I could hear live music in the streets, somewhere not too far from here, and talking, and laughter, long into the night, until the sounds finally thawed into an eerie silence. It's colder than it was when I left and even with the cozy warmth of the fire in the hearth, my bones caught a shiver, the quiet is bearing down on me now, and if it weren't for the neon sign in the window across the street, I might as well be back in 1850 for all the sparse detail I can see by the fire's embers. The trip to Stromus has been exciting and informative, but it took a lot out of me, and I could use some rest before embarking on my next adventure.